Meet an architectural glass artist who will create this table in a giant kiln. The magic of the fire is very much a part of what I do. The late afternoon light brings an eerie glow to the old factories of Worcester, Massachusetts. Located 30 miles west of Boston, Worcester was the center of the Industrial Revolution at the turn of the century. One of the greatest parts of doing what I do for a living is the fact that every morning I'm looking forward to coming here and starting a new project, seeing what the day will bring, uh, looking at the light, seeing how it changes. Stephen Knapp doesn't see these buildings as part of history. For him, they are home to something thoroughly modern. It's light, it's form, it's shape, and it changes all day long. Stephen is one of the world's most acclaimed creators of architectural art glass. Many of his creations can be found in homes across the country. He's a master at creating kiln-formed glass. It's a process where the glass is fired in an oven to create unusual and beautiful shapes. Glass is an incredible medium. It's frozen liquid. I mean, it's a plastic, extremely malleable medium that once it's in its final state is solid. So you can shape it, you can mold it. But the best part of all to me is what glass does with light. Stephen calls light the essence of my life. He started his professional career as a photographer, which taught him about working with light. Now, when he creates, he gets inspired by the beauty of his native Massachusetts. The last rays of sun streaming through a New England forest the sun sinking into the waters off Cape Cod. Everywhere Stephen looks, he sees magical light. Really looking at the, the way the light's hitting it, and I'm playing with the angles to watch it change color and shape and form for me. He's been practicing the craft of creating architectural art glass for the last 10 years since he first got intrigued by the process. The challenge of working with such a dynamic material is something he enjoys. I like the fact that you're working in a medium that is different from different sides and in different lights and at different angles. And that's part of the challenge of it, is to make sure it works from every side you can make it work from. His glass creations are primarily designed for homes, and they are so admired that many are considered works of art. So what I'm going to do today is actually shape a piece for a table. But this won't be just any table. It will be a 36 by 13 inch piece of glass shaped by mold Stephen calls his bones, custom designed for a client's living room. And they become elements that I then take and use as building blocks to make my tables, to make my sculpture. Sure. The bones are carved, shaped, and sand it into abstract forms that will help make the flat glass into a unique piece of furniture for his client's home. But the final piece is really driven as much by itself and maybe what I had for breakfast that day as anything else. It really is a, a spontaneous act of looking and reacting to what, I've, what I keep creating and making in front of me. And that's what you're seeing with these final pieces here. All right. So let's get these spread out here and we'll start to see how they look. The final pieces are taken to a nearby glass factory where they will be placed beneath the glass and fired in the kiln. Let's get the door open. The molds are carefully placed on a drawer of fine sand. Part of the tools of working with this is having pieces down here that will allow us to play in the sand and create things. 
A ceramic wheel is used to create additional designs. Okay, let's, uh, let's get the glass. We're set for the glass now. The three-quarter inch thick glass is placed on top of the molds. When heated, the glass will bend over the molds and then into the impression Stephen has made in the sand. That's the way it's supposed to work, in theory anyway. You create a piece like this, you make it work, uh, you have a pretty good idea where it's going, and occasionally there's a surprise, and sometimes the surprises end up in the trash heap, other times the surprises are sit back and you sit there with a beautiful smile on your face and take full credit for something you really didn't know was going to happen. This thing doesn't get any lighter, does it, though? <laughs> now all Stephen can do is wait. You've done everything you can at this point. Now it's in somebody else's hands. This one's set, Gerard. When Modern Masters continues, the glass moves from the heat of the fire to the warmth of a living room. You put these elements into a large kiln, you close the doors, you walk away, things happen. All set. Okay, great, let's fire it up. Outside Boston, Massachusetts, in a glass factory. Stephen Knapp, a master at creating original art glass, is ready to give life to his one-of-a-kind table. He has custom designed it for a client's home. The kiln is turned on. The glass is fired. And two days from now, we'll have it out. Okay, it sounds good to me. Hidden from view, the glass table cooks at a temperature of 1,500 degrees. Stephen must wait 48 hours to see how his creation turns out. And you just want to pull it back out and look at it and get this piece of glass out. But it's patience is part of this process as well. Moment of truth. See how it, how it turned out this time. After two days, the moment of truth has arrived. Okay, good. The power of the fire is revealed. Hey! It really, it worked well. Yep, you got the relief that you wanted. We got the relief. The relief over the, uh, that large sea form is wonderful. Look at the green in the glass. With the, with the uh, bones underneath, you get a feel for how the uh, light will hit it because you're getting the high spot showing up. What was once a hunk of glass is now a piece of art. The next step is making it into a piece of furniture for the home. Stephen finds steel as fascinating as glass. To help him build the base for his glass tabletop, he taps into the expertise of local welders. You know, there's as much involved in making the steel for these tables as there is making the glass. It's a major part of, the biz of what I'm doing. Two pieces of solid steel are cut, cooled, and sanded. I think that's workable. Let's turn it over and weld it. Go ahead and pack that sucker in place. With all of his projects, he searches for the perfect harmony of steel and glass. And I think we've got it. It looks good. Just a nice, really simple low table. Yeah, just very simple, and it works. For Stephen, the true test comes when he delivers it to his client, Lori, in her home just outside Boston. All right, put it on. The glass is placed in a location where it can best reflect, capture, and play with the light. How's it look, Lori? I love it. It is just, it's beautiful. The base is so great with it because it just doesn't take away from it. Can we touch it now? You can touch it. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's meant to be touched. That's the fun part of it. I know. That's Especially feel this part up here. Stephen Knapp's glasswork has won critical acclaim throughout the world, but his ultimate reward is a happy client. That's beautiful. I'm very pleased with that here. Yeah, it looks great. As you put the pieces together, you sit and wonder and hope and assume it's going to be perfectly right. But once it's here and sitting in this place, you know it's the right piece and the right place for it. And it works.